I'm in my workshop and I'm building my own light aeroplane. This my plane building chums is a cockpit module. That will go on there like that. And you know my wife lost her engagement ring. She's now lost her kitchen as well because I've had to have one of these built. I've got a lot on. I've got to finish the tailplane and assemble it into the fuselage and I've got to finish the cockpit module. But first, let's talk tube. And here it is, to give it its more precise name, it's actually a tailplane talk tube because one part of the tailplane fits on there, the other part, the other half, slides onto there. And it's called a talk tube because it converts the backwards and forwards movement of the push rod that connects to the yoke, the control stick in the cockpit, to a rotation to move the tailplane up and the tailplane down. It fits right through the tail, as you might imagine, and the first job is a spot of drilling. Mark. Where do I plug that in then? Cordless, mate. Aha, uh -huh, very nice. And yes, before you say anything, we did try and put the hole cutter in the electric drill, but it didn't fit. Now, if you haven't been watching the whole series, why not? But if you haven't, let me recap about the tailplane. Basically, it was a piece of foam in the right shape of the tailplane, and laid up on top of that is the normal fiberglass layups. Absolutely solid, solid. What I did then was cut out this little bit of it, which is called a trim tab. Now, it might not look like very much, but one of these on either side actually allows you, when you're flying, to be able to trim the aircraft so that you can fly straight and level and actually take your hands off the controls, which is really good because you've got to do your navigation and all the rest of it. So it's a really, really clever bit of kit, this. And the last job here is to just attach its hinges, which I pre-drilled and set up here, and then I can attach it to the torque tube. Put it on the torque tube. Pete, mate, you might need to um, hang on to the end of this torque tube for me. Will it fit? Yeah. Can you grab that bush? Yeah. Oh, you, it's going to squish your hand, mate. I tell you what, go stick your hand up the tail. Right. <laughs> Put your hand up there as though you're doing some kind of internal examination. Right, and just hold that bush up. I'm going to I'm going to put the pin in. <laughs> so I'm not going to do this now then. Look at that. I've got an idea. Let me just prop this up. Hold on. There you go. Drop it on there. Sort it. Next one. I'll just slide that in a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, you alright your side? Yeah, fine. Okay. Just get those legs in. I think we're sorted there. Let me just prop it up. Well, there we go. That looks the business. It's not perfect because it is a dry run. What I've got to do next is take these tailplanes off and then set up the torque tube perfectly before bonding in those brass bushes. But while I'm getting on with that, perfect time for you to go back to Gloucester Airport. It's a very special day. Will I or won't I have my first solo flight? Well, before I do anything, I've got to take a test. Right, this is the air law exam. It's the first examination I've had to take of six papers I've got to do to get this license. And it's 60 minutes, it's 40 questions, multiple choice. I have found this subject incredibly difficult to learn, I have to say. And I've got to do it on my own. So you guys out of here, go 60 minutes, all right? Keep your fingers crossed.
Right, Mark. Uh, it's a bit embarrassing, actually. No. Yeah. I do find this very difficult, this subject. Well, obviously, because you uh, managed to get one wrong, so well done, sir. Just one? Just one, yes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> first exam passed! That is the first exam I've done in about 13 years or something. I was so nervous in that room, I can't believe it. So well done, Mark. So uh, we'll need to move on now, then. So am I one done. step nearer my solo, then? You, you are one step nearer your solo, yes, that's right. So, uh, well, talking about that, we need to... You, your basic circuits now are good, so uh, we need to talk about one, about one or two emergencies. Uh, so um, in the event of something happening when I step out of the aircraft for the first time and you go solo, you'll be prepared to deal with them. So we're going to have a look at the, uh, the unlikely event of an engine failure just after takeoff, so the sort of the worst scenario, if you will. When I say I close the throttle and I say simulated engine failure, that's your cue to say, ah, right, the engine's failed, and adopt the appropriate checks and actions. So the first thing to do then is to, to lower the nose because we'll be in a climbing attitude of course. We've just departed the runway heading on towards the on the climb out section of the circuit. So lower the nose and trim the aircraft for 75 knots. The field selection procedure is size. We're going to use size, shape, surface, slope and shoots. It's all going to happen fairly quickly. Simulated. Okay, I'm going for that brown field straight ahead of us okay. now. Trim, trim. Trim, two stages of flap. Oh, I shouldn't do that. Can't touch that. Okay, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get. We're going to overshoot it. Okay, watch your next part. Third stage of flap. Okay. All right, go around. So generally, do aerodromes have fields conveniently situated at the ends of their runways then for landing when your engine fails? No, they don't. Um, here, however, we're lucky. And the end of um, certainly on the end of the western runway you're using today, there's plenty of open fields. There's actually a golf course. I'm trying to avoid any golfers. But, so, avoid a hole in one that's in. it. Yeah. But low the nose. Be positive. Go in there. Golf extra Bravo Tower. Yeah, I'd like to taxi and wire Alpha. Do Alpha 2 for a crew change and put the student out for the first solo. Okay, just call ready for departure when you are. Okay. Right. All right. Clear for takeoff, X ray Bravo. Three Bravo, final to land. Not bad at all. I did it, I can't believe I did it. <laughs> I landed it. God, that was nerve wracking. But I did it! I landed an aeroplane on my own! I can't believe it!
Aviator I've seen there. Yes! <laughs> yes! I was so nervous, I can't tell yeah. you. And you just uh, you, you almost don't think about what you're doing. And it, the, the really odd moment was when I turned for the first time. I kind of looked this way and there's nobody sitting here. And the view was so much better. <laughs> <laughs> what a great feeling! I can't believe it. I am absolutely soaked. Good. But I did fine. it! I can fly! You're an aviator, sir. Yes! Cog! Yeah. <laughs> we'll drop it in. Oh, Pete, mate, you could have brushed it out. It's dead flies and all sorts of things. Find your fingers. Okay. That's looking like something now, isn't it? You can see this plane is coming together. What we're going to do here, though, this will actually be glued in place eventually, but we've got to get it in exactly the right orientation because it will slide at the moment up and down like that and what's really important is where these two holes are one there and one here is where the pins will go through to attach the wings on their spars when you actually put the wings on and we need to make sure that everything is now in the right orientation so it's completely square so first job is to set a datum at the frontier so first job is to calibrate the inclinometer so cal 1, cal 2, and that should come back as 0. So inclinometer is set. We can now set up the cockpit module so that it is exactly level with that straight edge across the bulkheads. So put a bolt in there, which is where the pins will go through to attach the wings. Get another short straight edge and sit it on there. And then... Turn the sound on. Right, it's not quite right, which means this arrow here means that end's got to go up slightly. There you go. So I now know that across these two pins which will hold the wings in, that's exactly level with across the bulkheads at the front. I'll need to drill a couple of holes in the front of the cockpit module here and put some clecos in so that'll hold it in place. I can then draw around in here to mark it on the fuselage, take it out, prepare it for bonding, and when I come back in, set it all up again, and then when it's bonded in place and absolutely rigid, this datum across here between these two pins will be the reference point for building the whole of the rest of the plane. Welcome back to A Plane Is Born. I'm building my own two-seater light aeroplane and it is coming on a treat. The job in hand at the moment is to fix this, which is a push rod that will connect the tailplane torque tube at that end of the plane to another torque tube underneath the headrests here, which is connected to the yokes or control sticks here, so that when you pull back or push forward on here, it will operate the tailplane. Now this looks really heavy, but it's actually incredibly light because it's made of aluminium. And all I've done so far is to the ends, I've put this rose joint on the end here, which will attach to the tailplane torque tube that end. And, whoa, round, oops, round here, I've put this spigot here, which will attach to another rose that's attached to the torque tube in there. Sounds quite complicated, actually incredibly simple. The only difficult thing is actually attaching it all. And you have to get into a very unusual position to do it, which is like this. Put your head down, so bear with me. That's sorted. Now I've got to attach this rose joint to the torque tube here. The rose joint itself just screws on here like that and the really important thing is that for safety reasons, for strength, it has to be screwed on a length of thread that is at least twice the diameter of the shaft it's screwing onto. So there's plenty of leeway here to allow for adjustment 
and fine tuning, which will need to be done a bit later. The tricky thing is putting in these washers, which have to go inside here. And if you can't do it with your fingers, it's the old magnetic screwdriver trick. One more thick washer on the outside, and then I can just do this nut up finger tight at the moment because all this lot will need to be stripped off when it's set up properly so it can all be sprayed with zinc chromate to protect the metal. And now I can put on the mass balance arm. The world of aviation is full of all kinds of terminology and vocabulary you've never heard before. So, mass balance arm, mass, two of them, masses, arm, and it's used for balance. Over here. The balance arm itself is really easy to fit because it just slots in here and there are pre-drilled holes in this plate that's attached to the tailplane torque tube. So one goes in there and the bottom one of the two has got an adjuster on it and that's all fine. And the top one just goes in there and again just finger tight we've got a washer and a nut on the outside of that. So that's sitting in place. I bet you're still wondering what on earth this mass balance arm does. Well, before I can show you, I've got to put the tailplanes onto their little spigots. So, each tailplane, complete with its trim tab now, down here, which is just gorgeous, just needs to slide along here, so that this drive plate and the drive pins go into their little sockets. And use one of these amazing pins to... in place there just to hold it in now it'll probably all drop down through the weight which is fine just got to do the other side now I hope the principle of this mass balance arm is all going to become clear now you'll see that with all this set up the way it is at the moment the tailplanes are actually tipped as far back as they can go so if I press on the end of the arm they come up but they'll go right back there and that's because most of the weight of the tailplanes is behind the torque tube which it rotates around, only about 25% is in front. So to counteract that, to make the plane easier to fly and much more controllable and stable, we need to balance out that weight. So these solid steel masses slip onto the end of what is effectively just a lever. And one goes on there, that's not enough, it doesn't balance it. But a second one goes on like that, and that should be too much. And there you go, it just tips it that way. Now when I fine tune all this I'll end up grinding off some of that second mass to make it exactly the right weight to just balance it here. It's just like being a grocer really, weighing out your potatoes. The next job is to sort out the controls for these trim tabs. So while I sort out the bits I need, it's a chance for you to meet up with Steve Pike and Kevin Fagan who built another composite type aircraft called the Jabiru that comes from Australia. This aircraft is uh, the Jabiru aircraft, which is an Australian um, plane, it's a kit aeroplane. It took us about 650 hours to build, uh, over a period of about a year. Basically, we, we, we did look at a lot of kit aircraft because there, there's quite a wide range available now. The Jabiru for us gave us the best uh, performance from price. Obviously, uh, you're looking at things like uh, the cost of the aircraft to start with, the time it's going to take to build the aircraft, and once you've built it, obviously, how easy it's going to be to store, that's a very important thing if you want to take the wings off, if you're going to store it in a trailer, which is what we do. Um, and also once you've built it, the cost of flying it. The aeroplane is, uh, is basically a composite um, aeroplane. It's uh, built out of uh, fiberglass. The kit is supplied um, basically in bits. There's two halves to the fuselage. And what you have to do is join the two halves together. So you're using uh, fiberglass uh, joining methods to join that. Once you've got all that done, you have to uh, sand down all the joints, look for pin holes, make sure everything's filled in. to so basically get the aircraft ready for painting. And um, at that stage, the aircraft can be painted. This is painted with a, a two-pack. Uh, paint which is a uh, professional finish, which is professionally applied and the result is a nice smooth and uh, very slippery aeroplane. The cruising speed for the aircraft is about 100 miles per hour. Um, depending on obviously conditions you can fly between 90 to 110 miles an hour. 
Uh, but if you want to be comfortable in the air, which is the most important thing, between 90 to 100 miles per hour is what, you, what you're getting when you're, when you're obviously flying. Uh, we've got uh, 65 litres of fuel on board, which basically means we can fly for about five hours, uh, 100 miles an hour, so you've got a 500 mile range, which is well within what most people would like to do. The most important advice to anybody building a, an aeroplane is to firstly get set up. A good, good workshop is, is uh, obviously essential, the right tools. It's quite easy to um, lose your way sort of through a build and you've got to, uh, you're about halfway, you know, you think is this ever going to be finished, so you've got to really crack on. The handbooks are very good on kit aircraft nowadays. You, you do get exploded views and drawings. You have to be able to follow a drawing relatively well. Um, you don't necessarily need any, any other skills than, than most people have who can you know, maybe do a house up. Welcome back from the land of amateur plane builders. You join me, it's a very exciting time because after over 200 hours of playing with composites and layups and resin and all that stuff, I'm going to do some electrical stuff now, which is fantastic. What I've got here are all the bits you need to be able to set up the control system for the trim tabs. We've got a bell crank and a trim damper assembly there, a servo, which is a motor, electric motor, a switch, and a little LED display that will tell you where the um, trim tab, what position they're in, and a load of wire to connect it all up. And you will need one of these, not because you're going to drill any holes, but because you need the battery to be able to test it. Right, all sorted. Moment of truth to test the controls. First, let's see if the tailplane moves. Oh yes, look at that. Fantastic. So far, so good. Now for the trim tab, the electrics. The battery, there's a positive there. That's it, positive on this side. Negative on this side. Wish me luck. Here she goes. Yes! And the little lights work as well. You beauty! I love this plane. See you next time. Absolutely solid, rock solid. What I did then was cut out this little bit of it, which is called a trim tab. Now, it might not look like very much, but one of these on either side actually allows you, when you're flying, to be able to trim the aircraft so that you can fly straight and level and actually take your hands off the controls, which is really good because you've got to do your navigation and all the rest of it. So it's a really, really clever bit of kit, this. And the last job here is to just attach its hinges, which I pre-drilled and set up here, and then I can attach it to the torque tube. Right, let's put it on the torque tube. Pete, mate, you might need to um, hang on to the end of this torque tube for me. Can you grab that bush? Yeah. Oh, you, it's going to squish your hand. Mate. I tell you what, go stick your hand up the tail. Right. <laughs> stick your hand up there as though you're doing some kind of internal examination. Right, and just hold that bush. Come here, grab it. I'm going to put the pin in. <laughs> so what am I going to do with this now then? I've got an idea. Let me just prop this up. Hold on. There you go. Drop it on there. Sorted. Next one. 
just slide that in a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, you all right, your side? Yeah, fine. Okay, just get those lugs in. I think we sorted there. Let me just prop it up. Well, there we go. That looks the business. It's not perfect because it is a dry run. What I've got to do next is take these tail planes off and then set up the torque tube perfectly before bonding in those brass bushes. But while I'm getting on with that, perfect time for you to go back to Gloucester Airport. It's a very special day. Bravo, final to land. I did it. I can't believe I did it. I landed it. God, that was nerve wracking. But I did it. I landed an airplane on my own. I can't believe it. Yes! Yes! What a feeling. an aviator I've seen there. Yes! <laughs> yes! I was so nervous, I can't yeah, tell you. And you just, uh, you, you almost don't think about what you're doing. And it, the, the really odd moment was when I turned for the first time. I kind of looked this way and there's nobody sitting here. And the view was so much better. <laughs> what a great feeling, I can't believe it. I am absolutely soaked. Good. But Good I did it! Time. I can fly! You're an aviator, sir. Yes! Cog! Yeah. <laughs> we'll drop it in. Oh, Pete, mate, you could have... I'm in my workshop and I'm building my own light aeroplane. This, my plane building chums, is a cockpit module. That will go on there like that. And you know my wife lost her engagement ring? She's now lost her kitchen as well, because I've had to have one of these built. on. I've got to finish the tailplane and assemble it into the fuselage and I've got to finish the cockpit module but first let's talk tube. And here it is to give it its more precise name it's actually a tailplane talk tube because one part of the tailplane fits on there the other part the other half slides onto there and it's called a talk tube because it converts the backwards and forwards movement of the push rod that connects to the yoke, the control stick in the cockpit, to a rotation to move the tailplane up and the tailplane down. It fits right through the tail, as you might imagine, and the first job is a spot of drilling. Mark. Where do I plug that in then? Cordless, mate. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh, very nice. And yes, before you say anything, we did try and put the hole cutter in the electric drill, but it didn't fit. Now, if you haven't been watching the whole series, why not? But if you haven't, let me recap about the tailplane. Basically, it was a piece of foam in the right shape of the tailplane, and laid up on top of that is the normal fibreglass layups. 
Absolutely. Will I or won't I have my first solo flight? Well, before I do anything, I've got to take a test. Right, this is the air law exam. It's the first examination I've had to take of six papers I've got to do to get this licence. And it's 60 minutes, it's 40 questions, multiple choice. I have found this subject incredibly difficult to learn, I have to say. And I've got to do it on my own. So you guys, out of here. Go 60 minutes, all right? Keep your fingers crossed. Right, Mark. Um, it's a bit embarrassing, actually. No. Yeah. I do find this very difficult, this subject. Well, obviously, because you uh, managed to get one wrong, so well done, sir. Just one? Just one, yes. Yes! <laughs> yes! First exam passed! That is the first exam I've done in about 13 years or something. I was so nervous in that room, I can't believe it. So well done, Mark. So uh, we'll need to move on now, then. So am I one done. step nearer my solo, then? You, you are oh, one so. step nearer your solo, yes, that's right. So, uh, well, talking about that, we need to... You, your basic circuits now are good, so uh, we need to talk about one, about one or two emergencies. Uh, so um, in the event of something happening when I step out of the aircraft for the first time and you go solo, you'll be prepared to deal with them. So we're going to have a look at the, uh, the unlikely event of an engine failure just after takeoff, so the sort of the worst scenario, if you will. When I say I close the throttle and I say simulated engine failure, that's your cue to say, ah, right, the engine's failed, and adopt the appropriate checks and actions. So the first thing to do then is to, to lower the nose because we'll be in a climbing attitude of course. We've just departed the runway heading on towards the on the climb out section of the circuit. So lower the nose and trim the aircraft for 75 knots. The field selection procedure is size. We're going to use size, shape, surface, slope and shoots. And it's all going to happen fairly quickly. Simulated. Okay, I'm going for that brown field straight ahead of us okay. now. Trim, trim. Trim, two stages of flap. Oh, and I shouldn't do that. Can't touch that. Okay, we're going to get there, we're going to get there. We're going to overshoot it. Okay, watch your next plan. Third stage of flap. Okay. Alright, go around. So generally, do aerodromes have fields conveniently situated at the ends of their runways then, to land in when your engine fails? No, they don't. Um, here, however, we're lucky, and the end of, um, certainly on the end of the western runway you're using today, there's plenty of open fields. There's actually a golf course. I'm trying to avoid any golfers. But, so, in one that's year. it, yeah. But lower the nose, be positive, go in there. Got a picture of Bravo Tower. Yeah, I'd like to taxi in Briar Alpha. Do Alpha 2 for a crew change and put the student out for the first solo. Okay, just call ready for departure when you are. Okay. Right. All right. Clear for takeoff, X-ray Bravo. 